Hey heroes, welcome to another spectacular episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This channel is sponsored in part by Patreon supporters. If you would like to vote in monthly polls that help decide what topics get covered on the channel, you can sign up for $1 per month over at patreon.com slash marymarvelite. The link is in the description below along with other places you can find me. Silvio Manfredi was born many decades ago in Palermo, Sicily, where he grew up hearing tales of an ancient tablet containing the secret to eternal life. As a child, he moved with his family to the United States, where he grew into a young man and started gaining influence over the New York Magia. For those unfamiliar, the Magia, or Magia, is an organized crime syndicate made up of largely independent factions or families. They originated in southern Europe, notably in Italy, but expanded to the Americas and were fostering a growing presence in New York City. With relentlessness and cunning, Silvio Manfredi became the head of his own Magia crime family and cemented not only his own power, but the Magia's influence over the New York underworld as a whole. Before he turned 50 years old, Manfredi's hair had turned completely white, earning him the nickname Silvermane. And at some point he married a woman named Katerina, but it's not clear exactly when this happened. There were some outside the Magia who rivaled him, notably gangsters who operated out of Hell's Kitchen like Alexander Bont or Vincent Cole, but the Silvermane family was probably the most powerful criminal organization in New York for a time. However, he eventually learned that he wasn't untouchable when Manfredi was arrested and charged with tax evasion. By the time he was released from prison, he was nearly 60 years old and returned to a magia that had been fragmented by his rivals. Despite his age, it was around this time that he and his wife Katerina had a son named Joseph. At some point in his life, he also had an affair with Fujinet CEO Matsuko Ishii during a business trip to Japan, resulting in an illegitimate daughter. In America, Silvermane allied himself with a young gangster named Dominic Tyrone, taking him on as a partner and protege. Together, they took to the streets and worked to reclaim Manfredi's power. But apparently an ideological rift formed between the two, with Tyrone plotting to dismantle the power structures that Silvermane wished to dominate. And so Manfredi betrayed him first, sending his men to knock Tyrone out and drown him. What they didn't realize was that this attempted murder was witnessed by a young woman, but we'll circle back to that later. It should also be noted that during his rise, the Silvermane family also employed a gunman who would one day be known as Hammerhead. After years of work, Manfredi's biggest rival from outside the Magia was likely Don Rigoletto, who had a hard stance against his organization preying on children through narcotics and prostitution. However, Silvermane had no such scruples and, with little competition, built an entire empire on the back of the international drug trade. Of course, Rigoletto was eventually murdered and supplanted by his trusted enforcer, Wilson Fisk, who became known as the Kingpin. And sometime after that, the world started to change. Costumed crime fighters and superhuman heroes weren't unheard of before this, but they began to appear with increasing regularity for the first time since the 1940s. Not just superpowered vigilantes, but villains as well. Early in this age of Marvels, Silvermane was one of the few remaining crime lords to avoid hiring masked supervillains, partly due to advice from his lieutenant, Jackie Dio. You see, Jackie's father was also an enforcer for the Silvermane family, who feared that superhumans would supplant traditional gunmen. And the elder Dio passed away from injuries he sustained while wearing an untested supersuit. But by this point, Manfredi was in his 80s and his health began to decline. His wife Katerina had already passed away, but it's unconfirmed exactly when this happened. And so Silvio set his sights on the ancient Tablet of Life and Time, the artifact he'd heard tales of as a boy, and spent many of the intervening years studying the legends around. After finally being discovered, this artifact was also sought by the Kingpin of Crime. 
but his attempts to claim it were thwarted by the masked vigilante Spider-Man. Silvermane subsequently dispatched his own enforcer, the enormous Man Mountain Marco, who successfully stole the tablet. Meanwhile, Magia lawyer Caesar Cicero recruited Lewis Wilson, a crooked archaeologist who'd already studied the tablet and previously worked for the Kingpin. In an attempt to decipher the scientific secrets inscribed upon the relic, Silvermane also abducted an expert in biogenetics, Dr. Curtis Connors. It was he who deciphered that the tablet's hieroglyphs weren't representative of language, but biochemical formulae. At Silvermane's insistence, Connors concocted a serum based on his interpretation of the tablet, one which Silvermane ingested, confident that he would be returned to his youth. This certainly seemed to work, as Silvio Manfredi suddenly appeared to be less than half his actual age. However, Caesar Cicero then attempted to turn Man Mountain Marco against his employer, convincing him that the younger man couldn't possibly be Silvermane. And the whole situation was further complicated by the appearance of the Amazing Spider-Man. Throughout the ensuing conflicts, Silvermane continued to grow younger. But then he realized that the process wasn't stopping, even as he became a child once again. Eventually, he seemingly faded into nothingness as his tiny body melted into an unborn puddle of protoplasmic goo. But then, while nobody was watching, like an elastic band that had been pulled too far, Silvermane snapped back into existence, quickly aging in the other direction, and finally settling into a state resembling his 40s. And he soon found that the battle with Spider-Man had drawn the attention of the police to his headquarters. He slipped away and sometime later was approached by representatives from a division of the fractured terrorist group Hydra. Recruited into their ranks, Silvermane quickly became the supreme Hydra of their organization's new corporate-run branch. Having reinvented himself, he also began to surround himself with superhuman criminals, appointing them as field commanders and division chiefs in his Hydra. This also included his own son, Joseph, who, donning a costume which allowed him to fly and control bats, became known as Blackwing. From this new position of power, Silvermane plotted to destroy Hydra's enemies in S.H.I.E.L.D. and subjugate the Magia once again. But despite his planning and experience, Silvermane was ultimately outmaneuvered by Nick Fury. This is also because during the whole debacle, S.H.I.E.L.D. was aided by Daredevil and the Black Widow. Silvermane and Blackwing ultimately escaped, but were denounced by the other Hydra cells after this, and ultimately severed their ties to the organization. When he next resurfaced, Silvermane attempted to start a new underworld empire by uniting various mob bosses under his management. But this meeting was interrupted by a man posing as the Green Goblin. You see, this goblin was not the original Norman Osborn, nor his son Harry, but Harry's psychiatrist Bart Hamilton, who learned his secrets and stole his equipment. Among those secrets was the true identity of Spider-Man, and so Hamilton offered to eliminate the wall crawler in exchange for the loyalty of the mobs. Of course, Silvermane opposed the goblin since his plans interfered with his own. But during a subsequent battle between him, Spider-Man, and the Green Goblin, Silvermane was dropped from a considerable height and badly injured. For what it's worth, Bart Hamilton soon met his end in another battle which involved both Spider-Man and Harry Osborn. Silvermane soon recovered from his own injuries and returned to the Magia to consolidate his power. Relying on the drug trade, he worked with a chemist named Simon Marshall, who was developing a synthetic drug he proposed could replace imported heroin. To test this, runaways and refugees, primarily teenagers, were abducted and brought to a secret lab on Ellis Island. Another to be used as a test subject was a human trafficker Silvermane captured while eliminating a rival gang of snakeheads. However, Marshall's synthetic heroin turned out to be a bust, and almost everyone who was forced to take it died shortly thereafter. As far as we know, a total of three people survived, all of which were endowed with powers due to their specific body chemistry. Teenagers Tyrone Johnson and Tandy Bowen gained powers related to darkness and light respectively, and became the vigilante's cloak and dagger. 
As for the third survivor, the human smuggler was also endowed with dark force abilities and eventually resurfaced as the crime lord Mr. Negative. But before that, Silvermane was targeted by a swashbuckling vigilante calling himself Rapier. However, this man was actually Silvio's former friend and partner, Dominic Tyrone. You see, after being knocked out, weighed down, and dumped in a lake to drown, Tyrone was rescued by a woman named Clarissa who witnessed the attempted murder. He received medical attention, but between the damage to his spine and nearly drowning, it took years for Tyrone to fully recover. And when he did regain his strength, he trained for years after that, learning fencing from Clarissa's father and preparing to take revenge on Silvermane. Using the masked identity of Rapier, Tyrone interfered with Magia operations until he was face to face with Silvermane himself. Ultimately, Tyrone stunned the old mobster with an electric blast from his sword, but before he could complete his revenge, he was challenged by Spider-Man. Clarissa interfered in this battle when Tyrone was about to be defeated, but he actually resented her help. He abandoned her and planned on concocting another revenge scheme, but was shot by Silvermane while making his escape. He did survive that wound, but Rapier was later one of many villains to be killed by the notorious Scourge of the Underworld. As for Silvermane, it seems his injuries began to catch up with him as his damaged body reverted to a more elderly state. Meanwhile, Cloak and Dagger, having already killed Simon Marshall, sought to finish off Silvermane as well. However, the aging mobster had concocted one final contingency plan. And so after Dagger cut Silvermane's life support and left him for dead, his body was quickly taken away so his head and organs could be transplanted onto a cyborg frame. While his new body was strong, Silvermane was perhaps a bit too eager to try and take revenge on his attackers. Despite Spider-Man's attempts to stop her from becoming a killer, Dagger struck Silvermane down once again, shorting out his cyborg body with her knives of light. What they didn't realize at the time was that this inadvertently created a sort of link between Silvermane and Dagger when she absorbed some of his life energy. Furthermore, the bionic corpse was soon stolen by the Answer, an agent of Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. Using these scientists in his employ to reactivate his mechanical components, Fisk planned on using Silvermane as a sort of undead assassin. He was outfitted with a submission collar to control him and sent on a test mission, but was distracted by the appearance of Spider-Man. Overall, this test proved he was unfit for delicate missions as his rampage left considerable destruction in his wake. Furthermore, he was unresponsive when the Kingpin's scientists signaled him to return. The answer quickly deduced that Silvermane was being drawn to Dagger due to the connection between them. Despite Spider-Man's attempts to stop him, the undead cyborg eventually made his way to Dagger in an unconscious attempt to draw more light energy out of her. However, she was then taken by the answer and brought back to Kingpin's headquarters. The whole complicated situation eventually led to a battle at Fisk's Tower involving Silvermane, Spider-Man, the Black Cat, and of course, Cloak and Dagger. The answer theorized that Dagger's light powers could be used to treat Kingpin's ailing wife, and so when Silvermane attacked, there was a physical altercation between him and Fisk. The Kingpin held his own against the cyborg, but was soon worn down by an untiring opponent with superhuman strength. Ultimately, after being awakened by the answer, Dagger returned the light energy she'd taken from Silvermane, severing their link. And this also had the effect of reawakening Silvio Manfredi's consciousness, and he quickly escaped. Sometime later, a gang war began brewing in New York with several criminal factions involved, including a Magia family led by his old gunman, Hammerhead. While still recovering in his West Chester estate, Silvermane was attacked by a mercenary known as the Jack-O-Lantern, who was sent by the Kingpin's right-hand man, the Arranger. The old man might have had his bionic strength, but the Jack-O-Lantern was armed and experienced. 
The battle quickly ended when Jack destroyed Silvermane's cyborg body with an explosive grenade, taking the Magia Don out of the gang war. But while his body was gone, Silvermane's scientists were able to keep his head alive. He was brought to an abandoned Hydra base that he learned about during his time with them, and construction began on a new body using technology stolen from Stain International. Furthermore, he plotted to power this cyborg frame with Spider-Man's radioactive blood. The wall crawler was captured for him by androids built by the Tinkerer, but Silvermane's plans were thwarted when the Black Cat came to her ally's rescue. In the subsequent battle, it seemed like Silvermane was finally finished for good, but the body that was destroyed in that conflict was merely a robotic duplicate which the real Silvermane controlled from a secure room. After finding a synthetic substitute for Spider-Man's blood, he started plotting his return to power. This time his plans were thwarted by the interference of the Punisher as well as another undead cyborg, Deathlock. Having lost much of his standing, Silvermane retreated again and continued to plot ways to regain his position. Following the defeat and disappearance of the Kingpin, representatives from various criminal factions met to discuss dividing his holdings. Showing up uninvited, Silvermane demanded to stake his claim as well. However, the meeting was interrupted by the likes of Daredevil and the Punisher, and so Silvermane's demands went unheard. Damaged again, he pulled the strings in another scheme to regain control of the Magia. He made alliances with rivals from within the organization, like Caesar Cicero, and without, like with the Hell's Kitchen mob. He also recruited Elaine Cole, the daughter of his old colleague Vincent. He provided her with high-tech weaponry, allowing her to become the deadly Scorpia. This time, Silvermane planned to steal Deathlock's superior cyborg body. While he did succeed in transferring his mind into Deathlock's body, he was opposed by Spider-Man, Daredevil, and the Punisher. And ultimately, Silvermane's consciousness was repelled by Deathlock's original persona. When he next resurfaced, he was seemingly back in a human body and back in high standing with the Magia. Apparently, his original form was somehow preserved for years, and following his failed takeover of Deathlock, he was able to upload his mind back into it. Although at this point, he was wheelchair-bound. Furthermore, while his previous schemes failed, his boldness allowed him to regain control of the Magia. Shortly after that, he was called to a meeting of various mobsters, including other Magia Dons like Hammerhead and Caesar Cicero, called by the Vietnamese crime lord General Nguyen Nuc Coy. It's not that relevant to this video, but he's actually the uncle of the X-Man Karma. Anyway, another elderly crime boss, Don Fortunato, was using his own ties with Hydra to seize more control in New York's underworld. General Coy wanted to oppose him, but Fortunato ultimately succeeded in gaining more influence, at least until Wilson Fisk eventually returned to reclaim his throne. But after all of that, Silvermane's appearance has actually became fairly inconsistent with him sometimes appearing in human form and sometimes as a cyborg. According to official handbooks, this is because when his body started to fail him due to age, he would sometimes transfer his consciousness into a cyborg one until he could be stabilized. At some point during all of this, his cybernetics were also upgraded by his daughter, Saya Ishii, but it's unclear where the events of her life fit into the overall timeline. In any event, Silvermane's health eventually declined so much that an assassination attempt left him bedridden even as a cyborg. He eventually recovered again, but remained in cybernetic form after that. And sometime later, he had an encounter with the Owls Gang in a scrapyard in Brooklyn. Things erupted into a firefight, and one of the Owl's goons ensnared Silvermane with a magnet crane. The old Magia Don was dropped into a garbage compactor, and again, it seemed like this would be his end. However, he ensured that his power source and life support systems were contained within his skull, and so long as his head survived, so did Silvermane. He was eventually recovered by the Shocker and got caught up in a series of harebrained schemes involving Boomerang's so-called Sinister Six. 
I won't go into those events here, but I highly recommend checking out the superior foes of Spider-Man for the full details. And that's all I've got for you guys this week, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share it on your favorite social media. Also, feel free to let me know what other topics you'd like me to cover in the comments. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me. There's my Twitch channel, where I stream every weekend. There's my Twitter, which I am still going to refer to exclusively as Twitter. And there's my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month, you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!